This uh, example is to talk about how to draw the phase plane for the case of repeated eigenvalues. This is the example that I did in class on Thursday, and those of you that were there saw that uh, I had drawn a picture and it oriented it incorrectly, much like uh, had I drawn um, a spiral sink and drawn it clockwise when in fact it should have been counterclockwise. So, um, in this example, I want to remind you how we do this. And I did leave out the key step of determining the orientation um, of this graph. And once we have that, these are very easy to draw. So here's our example. Um, here's our system. Uh, we're looking for curves, functions, uh, x of t, y of t that satisfy this system, where a is minus 2, 1, 0, minus 2. Using the characteristic equation, we find one repeated eigenvalue of minus 2, and, um, and here's its corresponding eigenvector. The role of the eigenvector uh, is to lay down the one line that we know um, has to be in our um, phase plane. The eigenvector, in this case, runs along the x-axis that I'm drawing here in red. Make it a little bit thicker. And uh, um, and that is a, a line of solutions. Uh, for example, if I if my initial condition were here, um, we would see that solutions would move towards the origin, which is our equilibrium value. If my um, initial condition were on this side, we would start here and we would move towards the origin, which is our equilibrium point. And if we start at the origin, we of course stay at the origin. But I chose as an example, uh, I said, suppose we're at the point 2 minus 3. So suppose we're sitting here at this point. The question is, um, how do we approach this? When we look at the solution, uh, it would look like this, y of t uh, is equal to e to the minus 2t. 2 minus 3 plus t uh, minus 3, 0. This is after factoring out our, our uh, e to the minus 2t term. Here's our general solution for these uh, systems with repeated eigenvalues, where v0 is an initial condition and v1 is found this way. Uh, what I said was correct, but I, I left off the orientation. And so as you read this, I want you to appreciate that for large values of t, um, this term dominates. Uh, we are moving in the direction basically minus 3, 0 uh, for large values of t. And um, But as time goes on, this term is making us move to the origin no matter what is here. And so there are really essentially two pictures that can be drawn. I'm going to draw uh, one in, I'm going to change my colors, hold on. So one picture, and the one that I drew, um, would pass through our initial condition and approach the origin in this direction. And what is always true in these pictures is that we basically come from a direction parallel to the eigenvector um, direction, corresponding to lambda minus 2. And then we approach the origin from that same direction. But there is a second way of looking at this. There's no reason why I couldn't have come from this direction, passed through the initial condition, and then turned. Oh. Come from this direction, passed through the initial condition, and then turned this way. And this is, in fact, uh, the correct diagram. So how do I choose between the two? How do I know which way to, to draw it? In both cases, I am originating in a direction parallel to v1, and then I'm turning and finishing in a direction parallel to v1, but, but both of these are good. The missing piece is uh, 
determined exactly the same way we do it with the um, case of, of a spiral. In the case of a complex eigenvalue, uh, we don't know um, from our calculations whether we're spiraling clockwise or counterclockwise. And so the method there is the same as we'll choose here. We choose one point. So uh, I'm going to use blue. I'm going to let's choose the point uh, something off of the eigenvector direction. Let's choose uh, zero minus one. What's happening at this point? To determine the orientation, should a solution curve go through that point, I um, I choose um, my vector minus two, one, zero minus 2. Uh, in fact, let, let's take our initial condition. It probably makes more sense. Let's ex actually take uh, 2 minus 3 and say what, what's the direction as we pass through that point. Well, a times 2 minus 3 will give us that direction. I get a negative 4 and a negative 3, negative 7, and I get a positive 6. Now this is a this is not normalized. This is quite long, but you can see uh, that that if I start at this point and I move minus seven units over and six units up, then I'm I'm moving in a direction basically tangent this way, and that gives me my orientation, and uh, that's the best way to do it. Originally, I was going to choose. And there's nothing wrong with choosing this because it applies to all of them. Suppose I had chosen um, minus 2, 0, 1, 2. Uh, the point x is 0, y is negative 1. What's it look like when we pass through that point? Again, I get a negative 1 and a... Um, I'm sorry, this is a negative 2 uh, and a 2. And I see, should I be passing through this point here, I would be moving in the negative direction and up. My orientation would have to be this way. And so again, that tells me as I'm, that I'm sp spiraling, essentially, um, and moving uh, in what would be a clockwise direction. Okay? So, uh, again, our... Our solution in this case is given by the black line, and uh, and that's it. I'm going to show you a few more homework examples, and I hope that'll make sense. Thank you.